No. Orbat is a European territorial cooperation program that enables uh, cities to work together to develop new and sustainable solutions to major urban challenges through networking, sharing knowledge and building capacities for urban practitioners. As we said yesterday, many people here in uh, Kuala Lumpur, but uh, what exactly we are doing here? What is exactly the World Urban Forum? Greg Scruggs, Thomson Reuters Foundation, please tell us more about this event, which is the turning point of the uh, urban debate at global level with, uh, with World Urban Forum after Quito, one year after Quito, where are we are. Sure, so the World Urban Forum is the world's largest conference of urban thinkers. It was started by UN Habitat, the United Nations lead agency on urbanization back in 2002, and it's been happening every two years ever since. This is the ninth edition. Uh, and this one is particularly noteworthy because, as you mentioned, Simone, it comes just 15 months after the United Nations adopted the new urban agenda, a 20-year roadmap to sustainable urbanization that was negotiated by diplomats and agreed upon by national governments at the Habitat 3 Summit in Quito. So now that the dust has settled from the long process to arrive at that 23-page document, uh, the conversation here this week is about how do you turn those very lofty aspirations for what a sustainable city looks like, how do you make them a reality? So do you see that there are some progress that have been made in this uh, 15 months or not? A little bit. I, I'm describing it as slow, if not steady. Um, so there were a handful of commitments made in Quito by different governments about what they were going to do to, again, turn this document into a, a reality and there weren't that many commitments made in Quito to start with I think is the biggest problem um, but the major ones that were made I, I've noted some progress on the one I'm most excited about personally is the European Union has been working hard to come up with a global definition of what is a city sounds kind of esoteric and it is uh, but you know the problem is that when we look at a, something like the UN's world urbanization prospect it's this uh, booklet that comes out every couple years that basically says, okay, this is the every country in the world, here's how urban they are. Uh, and, you know, those kinds of statistics matter because that's how we compare, you know, where's the world going? Are people moving to cities? That sort of thing. Every country basically has their own definition of what counts as a city. So in the United States, the minimum threshold is 2,000 people. In Egypt, it's 100,000 people. So when you have that wide of a definition of what counts as a city or as an urban uh, scenario, you're going to have really different, it's, it, it's what we like to call a, not an apples to apples comparison. You're basically comparing apples to oranges. And the EU has, uh, using you know, really advanced geospatial technology, basically a satellite map of the earth that actually shows you where people live, have been able to calculate a universal definition that can be applied across the globe of what counts as urban. And the long story short is that all of those numbers that we get in the fact book, and we like to say that country so-and-so, like Egypt is 42% urban, completely wrong. Places like Egypt are actually 85% urban. Uh, I mean, really just, you know, we, the UN likes to say that we're going to be as a planet 60, what do they say, like two-thirds urban by 2030? We're already there. We're already past that if you trust the EU's definition, um, which, as I understand, is that, you know, they really kicked the tires on that one. So you have the perception that the European Union, um, that was not that much present in Quito. They were there, but not that much as uh, expected, uh, a continent which is uh, uh, permanently urban. Uh, now is gaining again a strong role at global level. I think so. I mean, they, they made a, a, 10, a 10 or 12 point list of commitments in Quito. Some were come see, come saw, you might say, <laughs> you know, not exactly groundbreaking. Uh, others were, you know, really put some muscle. Um, you know, among EU member states, I mean, Germany deserves credit um, for something called the, I believe it was the Transformative Urban Mobility Initiative, TUMI. And I don't have the figures at hand, but we're talking in like the hundreds of millions of euros of investment directly in developing world countries to transform urban mobility, uh, basically to try and, you know, boost uh, public transport, walking, cycling, alternatives to private automobile ownership. So that's, you know, very direct foreign aid that says, okay, we're taking, you know, I mean, Germany, frankly, like probably already meets all of the goals of the new urban agenda. Their cities are pretty darn sustainable by most definitions. Um, but they said, okay, well, we're a wealthy country. We want to see the rest of the world also look sustainably urban. We're going to put our money where our mouth is and not just preach this kind of a vision, but actually help other countries get there uh, because, you know, frankly, it costs money to do that.
I think that here in Kuala Lumpur we are seeing many different approaches for the implementation of the new urban agenda. City to city cooperation seems to be uh, quite more important than in the past. Uh, the support, direct support, as the one that you said of uh, Germany and other countries to uh, uh, strategies uh, of urban development of Global South are important as well. Um, in the European Union, which is the uh, most effective strategy in implementing the new urban agenda at this stage, at this moment? Oh, I i would say at this stage, I do think those kinds of cooperation networks are probably the best bang for your buck. I mean, w we've got 20,000 supposedly people here in Kuala Lumpur uh, on a planet of 7 billion people, you know, at least half of whom live in cities, at least 3.5 billion of whom live in cities. Uh, so if the 20,000 people that come here go back, scatter back to their corners of the world and basically take the message with them because of the kind of networking they were able to do in, in KL at the World Urban Forum, uh, follow up on you know, some of those connections and whether it's technical assistance from UN Habitat or a tidbit of research they got from the OECD or a snazzy set of statistics from the World Bank or you know, a really concrete tool from one of the you know, NGOs here like the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy. Uh, and if they can take those things home with them, uh, it, it's sort of, you know, let a, let a thousand flowers bloom, you might say. And I think just, just getting the knowledge out there through a forum like this is probably the best thing that can be done at the current stage. What about America? What America is, is offering here in, uh, in Kuala Lumpur? Not very much. <laughs> uh, uh, our current uh, administration, our, our current president, uh, Donald Trump, is not known for his engagement at the international level. There is a U.S. delegation. It's headed by an assistant secretary from our Hou Department of Housing and Urban Development, something like a, a Ministry of Housing uh, in the U.S., um, I'm going to be interviewing him tomorrow, so uh, tomorrow I'll have a better answer to your question. Um, <laughs> but what I can tell you is that the news out of that department is not very good. Uh, the proposed budget uh, from the Trump administration that's being negotiated in the, the legislature right now would cut funds for, for this department, um, and this department provides uh, vouchers, uh, subsidies directly to low-income Americans for help with their rent, to the, you know, help with their housing. Um, there's a uh, actually, I was just reading a, a leaked memo was reported today that uh, HUD, the the acronym for this department, is planning to raise the rent on residents of social housing in the United States at a time when rents are at an all-time high in our most economically competitive metropolitan areas. So. I am, I'm looking forward to the chance to chat with the Assistant Secretary tomorrow and ask him, given cuts to social housing and, and uh, support for low-income renters in the United States, is the U.S. living up to its obligations under the new urban agenda? Very last question, Greg. What are the most interesting uh, stories that you saw here? What are the most interesting urban development experiences that you, that you saw in the all different events that we uh, have here in Kuala Lumpur these days? Well, again, the, the urban nerd in me was most excited about this redefinition of what is a city and this kind of global empirical definition that will actually give us some uh, reliable measurements so that we're not just talking out of our you-know-whats when we, when we say that uh, you know, country X or country Y is a certain percentage urban. Um, that's, of course, a very uh, technical debate. Um, tonight, though, I'm going to be reporting from Kampung Baru, uh, Kampung is the Malay word for village, and uh, a number of cities in Southeast Asia have these traditional settlements that basically were rural villages, uh, and the city has grown around them. And Kampung Baru is the last uh, of those villages in the inner city part, uh, the most valuable part of Kuala Lumpur. So needless to say, it's facing development pressure to turn these low-rise buildings into high-rise skyscrapers. Uh, there's apparently a popular night market there on Saturday, and I'm looking forward to checking it out and hearing from the residents and the uh, hawkers and the shoppers there uh, wh how they feel about the government's plan to redevelop their community. Where we can read your stories in these days? You can find most of my work at the Thomson Reuters Foundation at this is place t h i s i s p l a c e dot o r g, uh, and I'm also here reporting for Next City, Urbanet, and Devex. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, you can uh, follow our journalists on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, www.urbact.eu. Bye.